Hi, I'm Lee, welcome back to the channel. And in today's DIY vlog, where I'll be putting our central heating upstairs. Right, so I've just been trying to plan out where we're going to run these pipes. Uh, I've just stuck this little one up now just to make sure it goes through, see where it's going and that's fine. In a way I'm quite lucky because we have taken down our sort of old kitchen ceiling where this was because the amount of leaks that had come through the ceiling, the, the roof was pretty rotten. So we took it down, we're going to plasterboard over that, but it makes this job a lot easier. So in previous videos, you've seen us, we tapped into our hot and cold feed uh, for our mains and our, our boiler pipes. Uh, we just run them up the wall and then into our bathroom up there to our sink, the bath, the sink and the, and the toilet. So today we'll be pretty much doing the same thing. I know we've got our flow and return and they're just um elbowed into down there so what we're going to do we'll change them to t pieces run them along up this wall and hopefully i can run them around there i don't want to put any 90 degree elbows on there so we're going to see if we can just bend them around we're going to then run them down along the floor joist and then we're going to pop through probably something about here through the floor joist then also we're going to try and get it up through that part because that is where, or that's roughly where we're going to have the towel rail in the bathroom. Now there are rules and regulations as to where you can put notches in floor joists and holes in floor joists. So I recommend you look that up. I will put a link below, probably looking at between there, we can drill our two holes for our flow and return to come through and obviously the same all the way along. But again, you measure it properly, do it right. So we'll take in this as our main support. As you can see there, you've got one joist that is for this room and connecting into the external wall. And then our other floor joist for our hallway upstairs, our landing. Obviously that sits on the support there, through there, and then all the way down this way. So let's go and take a look where this pipe comes out that I've squeezed up there. This is our bathroom wall, so that is where, down there is where that steel beam was in the kitchen. So we've literally, we've got our two joists that overlap here. So we've obviously got our pipe that side of it. And then that's just running under the floor and coming out down here. Uh, now one of these floor joists was originally lifted up because it's got all the electric cabling in there which is where I would have really liked to have run the, run my pipes. So we've lifted the floorboard up next to it. Because of the spans and the calculations we've done, uh, we're in within the tolerance here to put the notches on top of these floor joists to just run them along this side. And then this little piece coming out here was what was, I was playing with. I've already installed, um, I've just put the radiators on the wall in here, the small one for the bedroom and obviously the big one in there. And then obviously when we connect that one up, because this is just a stud partition wall, we can just pass the pipes. We'll change the elbows to T pieces. We can pass the pipe under the wall and then that's just gonna go into the same wall this side. So that's the plan. But then with this little radiator, we had a problem with putting it here. Um, if you look straight down there, where we need to put our pipe is where the floor joists run. So this one, this one I've decided just to leave the, the sort of towel going to the radiator, just in pecs because it's going to be more flexible. So I hope, I'm hoping it can just come out there and sort of bend up into there. If it looks rubbish, then we might take it out and we might relocate the radiator down to that wall over there. But we're going to see about that one. 
but because of the position as well we're going to need to run that behind that floor joist and then I've lifted another board up here so we're uh, so we're in tolerance again here to put notches in this one so our 15 mil pipe that goes to our radiator will notch this out bring our two 15 mils to here then they can come back along and go back to the 22 we'll tee into that and we'll run the pipes along to the radiator right so let's get our poles drilled in the downstairs joist we'll measure them get them holding the holes in the right place then we're going to have the fun of trying to <laughs> trying to weave 22 mil <laughs> pex pipe in one long flow without any joins just so there's less failure points under the bathroom <sighs> wish me luck so we can drill our first hole in this one making sure you're within your area that you're allowed to drill make sure it's in the middle and let's get through here minding this electrical cable that's behind here and get some goggles on because there's all sorts of dust coming down and probably a mask definitely wear a mask all right so here we go for our first hole that was our line we draw which is 0.25 away from our support and then our next line is up there so we can drill in between these two lines all right because we've drilled a 25 mil hole uh, from center to center can no be no more or sorry no less so it can be no less than three times the width of that hole so three times the width of this hole 325 is 75 so if you put your 75 marker on the middle then the center of your next hole will basically be there so i'm just going to mark that next one out and then we get drilling all these holes and all these floor joints Right, so yeah, so we'll get our pipe, it needs to go over there, but we'll start here and we'll get it up and we'll try and put it through these holes. Well, I'll just put my gloves on, try and give me a bit, of, a bit of grip on this. And I want to try and do this in one piece over to the corner. So this is going to be fun. All right, before we start, I'm just going to get some gaffer tape over the end, so no dust, no sawdust or anything goes down there. Protects the ends a bit. There's definitely plenty of room for it to bend in there, so we're going to get it in here, clip it to the floor joist, Get it along the other side and bend it back down. All right, so we've just got some uh, pipe clips and a screw. Oh, yeah, so that will go in there, okay? Still searching for some. work on that we might be able to work on that bend once the pipe's actually been heated up with the hot water so we've just got to go down to the bottom of the floor there so we're just gonna cut this length because it's still on a big roll that's just fallen over in the hallway this stuff is an absolute nightmare to work with this is the work of the devil <laughs> Put your goggles on. Wear goggles, you get so much dust in your eyes. 
silly boy pint. There we go, we've got two lengths now. Cut them a bit extra long, but they've basically just got to go down into that corner. Right, so we've just run our pipes up now. We've got both our pipes down there. We've connected up our radiators and just run them back. Uh, connected the ones up in the bedroom here. Just run some pipes out. So what we need to do now is we need to notch out our floor joists. Right, we've got a few options. Don't know what I'm going to go with yet. You know, you can probably use whatever you want. Uh, we've got circular saw. We can try just cutting loads of lines in, then chiseling it out. Uh, we've got a router we could try, although I'm not sure where it's going to get close enough to the edge. We're going to try starting with a router and just do uh, a couple of runs and progressively deeper. I mean, not everyone's going to have a router. You could just use a normal saw. You could just take a hand saw. Or probably a tenon saw might be a, a little bit easier. But what you want to do is, you can see the two, where the two nail holes are there. So really you need to keep inside them. You, know, you could just use a saw. It's hard to do one hand holding the camera. So that's one option. Just do a couple of lines and then chisel that out. Otherwise, same thing, you could just run along with a circular saw if you've got one. Uh, not everyone's going to have a router, but we're going to try that because I think that will be the quickest option. All right, so I'm just going to put it down. Where's our lock-in lever? There, we've got our lock-in lever down. So now we can just run it along, following our, our floorboard here to keep our line straight. Let's see what happens. The only trouble with this one is it makes a lot of dust. Right, so now I'm just going to change our depth. So we'll push this down. Now, Frank, what are you doing under there? Now, Frank, what are you doing under there? Get out! Bloody cats. <laughs> what are you doing under there, Frank? Oh, God. Could you didn't come out when this was spinning? Right, let's go again. Now we want to move the, f we use the full depth of our cutter. Oh, I've just got an old stick I use for stirring varnish and paint. Uh, let's use that as our guide now. See if that's good. Let's put some oil on these things. Stretch this thing around. Yeah, that's well below the surface. Well, I say well below, you've got a few mil below the surface there. If we need, need a, any more, you can just get the chisel and we'll chisel that bit out. Right, let's do the rest. Right, so there you can see the single one fits in with a little bit of room there. But then when we get down to the double one, they're a little bit too tight in there and they seem they just seem like they're sticking out a bit on top of these ones where I can't get the router to go any lower so what we do we just get a chisel out just knock out a tiny bit extra on the sides and we'll just chisel out a tiny bit just like another mill out the bottom it's made them a little bit wider so they've got plenty of wiggle room in there now and they're well below the uh, top of the floor joist so that's it, they run through and pop out the end now. And then for the radiator in the little room, as we've said before, we'll just notch this out on here. They come under the floor. Uh, there is two under there, there's one of them. 
So now we're just going to tee our 15 mils together. We'll get our reducer up and we'll put them back to the 22 down to 15 in the other part of the tee. Then all we've got to do. So now we've got to do down here, we'll just uh, connect up our 22 mils to the elbows. And then we are ready to tee them into the heating downstairs on the boiler. Right, so we've connected up our 22 mil pipe down there now. We've just pushed those on. So now we can cut our 22 mil pipe to length here and connect them up. We were young and foolish then. Oh, how I wish we could go back again. I've decided it's been too long, baby. Reaching out to touch your heart. So that's it. We are all connected up now. So what I suggest you do now, go around, make sure all your nuts and connections are all done up nice and tight. Make sure all these are done up tight. Just check this, check on the radiator, any connection, just check them all. The next job now is cutting into the flow and return in the downstairs system and connect these up and then We'll be turning the water on. We'll be turning the boiler back on. And if there's any leaks, it's going to be on your ceiling. Right, so we're going to do a little bit of sorting out down here. We're going to take our two pipes that they've just dumped down there as well. We're going to clip them back up, get the runner pipes under here. When I've installed the radiators, I haven't put any drain off valves on them, which is, which is basically one of these things. Um, so you'd basically tee into one of your radiators from the, uh, from the tail, tail pipe or down pipe. You tee into it and then that would basically come out of there and have your drain off so you can connect a hose to that and then you undo your nut to drain your water out of your radiators. Because I, I didn't really, I didn't have any of that at the time when I was putting the radiators in so I didn't bother. But the only trouble is, now when I need to drain the heating system down, I have to disconnect these pipes and let it just flood under the water, under the floor. But this is all soil under here, so it'll just go in the soil, just take a little while to drain out. But yeah, now I've got to, I've got to work out what I'm gonna do with that, that thing. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that, but every time I hit the camera, I kept turning off and it's got a bit frustrated in the end. Because of this elbow they've put in there, it's literally being squashed by the gas pipe. So there was really no way of getting that, if you can see that one. There's no really way, there's no real way of getting that one out of there. So I decided just to cut the pipe back here and put a T on it. So then that obviously comes out and goes across into our pipe that's going upstairs. And did the same with the other one in the end, just teed into there and elbowed it out and that's going up. And then I've clipped my pipes back up here. When I change this floor joist, cause this is rotten through. When I change this floor joist, I'll probably end up just tidying up a bit more and clipping them to the floor joist. It's getting a bit crowded behind there, but I've still got a bit of lead pipe to take out, which is that one right there at the back. So, but this whole floor is coming up, replacing these floor joists. That one is just falling apart. And that one, and that one at the end's a bit damp as well. Now, let's turn our boiler back on. Actually, before we turn it on, Right, so because we've emptied it, obviously our pressure is down on zero. Um, we've got a fiddling loop here. Your boiler might be slightly different. A lot of them, some of them have like 
you know, a lever upper there or an older one will have a plug that you have to push in and turn and then turn another tap on. But this is our filling loop. So we can just turn this on here, that way. And we can watch our pressure rise. But I'm not gonna to put too much in there for now. I wanna run round and check all the connections. Right, so we've just got, it's just started going up, just sort of under half a bar there. So we're gonna run round now, checking for leaks. Right, so there's nothing on there. I don't see anything on those ones leaking. The most important ones though, well it's getting dark now. Let's turn some lights on. All right, so the main ones we want to be checking is under the floor here. So they're all okay, they're all bone dry. Check all our radiator connections as well. Check underneath the bottom one. Just got to feel around, feel around your nuts, I was going to say. Someone's going to have a laugh at feeling around your nuts. Feeling around your joints, it's just as bad. So that one's all dry. So let's put a bit more pressure into the system on those two under there. You probably can't see, but they're looking okay. Otherwise it would be dribbling down here. All right, so let's open our filling loop again. Keep an eye on our pressure. All right, let's take it up to one. We'll stop there. I'm just going to do a quick run around check myself. Yeah, we've done one check with you already. So I'll come back if anything's leaking. Right, so everything's good upstairs. Still nothing, so let's take her up some more. Right, we're gonna stop it, stop it there at one and a half bar. For a combi boiler like this, that is normal, about one and a half bar. So what we'll do now, now we've got some pressure in there, we'll turn the boiler back on. That will start pumping the heating round and now we'll go around each radiator and bleed them all. And then after we've done that, we'll come back and we'll, because you're letting the air out, it's also going to let the pressure of the boiler out. So once we've bled all the valves, we'll come back down here, put our pressure back up to one and a half where it should be, and we should be good to go. Heating upstairs and downstairs. Woohoo! I feel like royalty. It's been a long time. I can't see this on the tiny screen as if it's showing you or not. Well, there you go. I can see that one. Right, so we've got heating upstairs now. Time to clean away all these tools. And there we go, that's at 61. Right, so I think that's pretty much it now for installing our own central heating. We've got the heating on downstairs, heating upstairs. Run all the pipes for our hot and cold to our bathroom. Obviously, we've still got a couple of radiators left, one in the room next door, but we're just going to tee in here. And um, obviously, the towel rail in the bathroom. But that will probably be our next video, is stripping out our bathroom, taking all the tiles off the wall from floor to ceiling, and then probably having to bond coat and skim all the walls. And my wife wants me to paint the bath, because it's an old cast iron one. And I think we're going to have to re-enamel it as well. So All that kind of fun coming up. But I hope you, um, I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope it's helped you. I hope, hope it's made up your um, mind whether you want to install your central heating on your, um, on your own. I mean, this, this doing, doing this myself has probably saved me, well, easily over a thousand pounds. So we might do a little update video of how much everything costs. We didn't really, from the deal we got, we didn't really spend that much on, on top of it. It was just um, some more packs of elbows and tees and another roll of 22 mil PEX pipe, which is probably the most expensive one. That was about 40 quid, I think. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you get notifications of when my next videos come out. Like I say, we've got loads to do. Yeah, so thanks for watching this video. Thanks for watching this series, if you've, if you've watched them all. So if you're thinking about installing your central heating, you know, just get out there and do it. 
and save yourself a load of money and do it yourself. It's well worth it. See you next time. It's over now, Pippa. We can all relax. We have heating. We've got heating, Pippa, now. Are you enjoying it already? <laughs> Is it time for dinner? It's late, isn't it? Should we go and get dinner? It's dark out. Let's go and get dinner then. Come on, din dins. That was very good, Pippa.